Good morning. It is a nice frosty eight degrees out this morning. We got a nice sunrise coming up. It's gonna be a chilly day. I think it's gonna be a beautiful day. At least when that sun comes out, it's gonna feel good. We got quite a bit of snow. I'm gonna say we got close to eight inches of light fluffy stuff, which is always better than the heavy wet stuff, so. Somebody seems to be enjoying the cold, frigid morning. That's for sure. The cows love this weather. Well, we got about eight inches of snow yesterday into last night and we need to clean up down here by the workshop so we're not trudging along in it while we're working. So let's get this cleaned up and then we can start working. Well, it's been cold out. It sure didn't like to start, but it did. All right, that'll clean it up good for now. It's nice that the ground is actually frozen and to be plowing on frozen ground and not mud, that makes such a big difference. It makes it so enjoyable. I'm really enjoying my Arctic snow plow. That thing on the TYM tractor is a beast. Well, I'm glad that sun came out. It feels good. And it looks like you've been out here making artwork. Oh man. We don't want it melting and causing ice. Look at where I stepped to get so see him. Right. It'll be interesting to see by the end of the day, how much of the snow gets 
compressed, which is from the sun. Because it's pretty much just like fluffy air. Instead of being out here playing in the snow, I probably should have been cleaning it out, but oh well. That's not working out well. Yeah, it's nice having the pallet jack to have the tin on just to easily move it back and forth. Now we need to figure out exactly where we want to put our divider for the goat and sheep pen. I put some blocking in for our T-nuts. All right, so if I measure 42 inches from the outside edge to the outside edge of our gate, that'll give us what we need. Let's get, we get the ends cut off. Then we can get it over here. Pre-drill. Oh, we gotta do the tin first. So we gotta get some J channel up around this first. And our first piece of tin will come over, say like here. One side attached. Got to make a place for our J channel to hook on to, and that we have enough room to get our hands in. That'll be good. We have decided that the way that we use the mounting stanchion out there, the lock system for where the cow puts their head in, is easy. The best way is to do it is the way we already currently do it. So. That's what we're doing right now, is getting the locking system for the head part in, installed. So now we want to go 28 and a quarter. And then we need to go 11 and a half. And then 76 and three quarter. Hope our shipment of J channel and screws come in soon. They're supposed to be here the other day, but because of the snowstorm, they've been delayed. And I'm getting low even on my leftover charcoal screws.
I like that. I still gotta do our J channel once we get more J channel in there. That looks nice like that. That looks cool. If I was a cow, I'd wanna put my head through there. Watch out. Yeah, kinda. All right, now we can get the gate in. That looks cool. All right, so this side we have a three inch gap. So I'm gonna have to shim out each side with a two by four. I'm just gonna come to where this rounds over. So I'll get two cut. The worst part about that, that means we gotta go for a ride and pick up some longer bolts. My bolts that I bought the other day are a half inch too short. So let's get this made. We'll get everything pre-drilled, make sure it's all gonna work the way we want it to work. Then we'll have to run out and get some bolts. You and them bolts. I know. That just goes ahead and proves my point that we need a bolt cabinet here at the homestead. So that's definitely top on my list. But I can't see. Okay, awkward position. I have to be like right there. Don't get your head stuck. Right. All right, I got our T-nut that we need to install. It's more like an X. We call it a T-nut. It's good right there. I want to get these all pre-drilled before I put the spacer in because this way I can bolt it tight and that'll hold it where if I have a spacer in there, I can't have a bolt in there yet. So we'll get these other two done. I like it. That'll work perfect. So let's get it figured out where we're going on the other side. And then we can get that side drilled, get our T-nuts in, make our spacers. Before I can drill this side out, I gotta get a spacer made for over there. And then I have to have my longer bolts because I want to have that bolted in place. And then put the spacer over here and pre-drill it all with that end bolted so I know it's, everything's exactly where I need it to be. So this is gonna go like so, and let's go out and get some bolts. The one good thing about going to Home Depot, it gives me time to warm up, because it's still like 15 degrees outside right now, so I'm not gonna complain about riding in a warm truck. So let's go pick up some bolts, and then we can get back and get this installed.
luckily it should be a quick, easy in and out and then back on the road. Well, that was quick and painless. They had everything we needed. I picked up a few extra just in case for next time and I picked up some nuts, so we'll have them, but we definitely need to get a bolt bin set up in the new workshop. These better do it. <laughs> if I have to run out and get more bolts for this project, I'm going to be highly disappointed. Bam. I like that. All right, let's get these T-nuts set. I'm gonna put them in from the back side. Let me set the other two down. Then I'm just countersinking them with a bolt. It might be fun trying to line up all this stuff. But... And I like that. Okay, I don't like that. I ripped this board down to an inch and an eighth. Let's see if that's enough to spread it and make the gate work better. Bam, I like that. I was in here grabbing zip ties and I know a lot of you have been asking about the grid down readout system and how it's been doing. It's doing really well. We haven't had any issues with it. All it's been powering all of our needs. I just checked and right now we are 95% charged making two kilowatts of power with minimal sun. All of, let's shut this light off. All of the solar panels on the roof are covered with snow and the sun is behind cloud, but it's coming out, but it's not like super strong. And we're making two kilowatts of power. Boom, right there. So I am happy with that. We've been using that thing for all of our power needs. Powering out the powering out to the barn, all of our tools for charging things. So I am pumped about that. So it is doing good. I have some feeder panels that we got from Premier One a while ago to make a second hay feeder, like the one the cows are using. But I never made it, and I need something to put on the inside of this panel and gate so that the sheep and the goats can't sneak through it. So. We're gonna use those galvanized panels from Premier One. They look, they're heavy duty and they work really good. Just like everything else, it needs to be customized. Bummer. Mm, that might work though. I'm not sure if the goats will be able to get under that. A couple of reasons I did that. That lines up perfectly with that top bar. And I don't want to have it too low because if I have it too low and there's a lot of bedding in there, that's going to rub. So I got to make sure it's low, but not too low, if that makes sense. So we're going to go with that height. If we need to make adjustments, we can. Now we can get this side done. 
go like that. All right, I got this panel all cut, trimmed. Let's see how we did. It's gonna be like perfect. Like I would almost think that Premier One, when they made these, knew what I was gonna be using them for. Gina keeps saying we need to have something to close this off when we're not using it. So if the goats are out in this big area, they don't get through. So I'm curious if this is gonna work somehow. <laughs> no way, that's like a perfect fit. I mean, it's not perfect, perfect, but that's pretty close. It's close enough where I could make a wooden frame to go around it and then put hinges on it maybe and hinge it like this, so when we're not milk, when we're milking, oh, that'd be perfect. We can close, open it like that, and then when we want it closed so that no animals can sneak through here, boom. I'm thinking we gotta do something like that. You know it's cold when your water freezes. And in this drink, we have Redmond's electrolyte mix in it. It's like makes it like a Gatorade. It's good to keep you hydrated better, but that has salt in it. So that is how cold it is out right now that salt water is freezing. So we just roasted another chicken the other night. And when I have a roasted chicken, I like to use the carcass and make a nice chicken broth. I like to do it in my Instant Pot and it works so easy and it's simple. It makes a really good broth. So I'm going to go ahead and make some cheddar and broccoli soup tonight. One thing I really love to do when I'm making my chicken broth is, or not when I'm making it, but when I'm using vegetables like onions or carrots or celery or any of that, when the parts that I don't use, like the ends and stuff, I don't use when I'm cooking. I save that and, the, and then I put it in the freezer and then I add it to my stock so that way I can just have a bunch of that scraps. I just kind of keep it all mixed up in a bag in the freezer and then I dump some in. Then I put my chicken in there and then all the things. And it's just really simple, easy. I don't have to, I can just use up things I wouldn't use when I'm actually cooking. So I like that. Now it's time to make the roux, to make the nice creaminess that's gonna go into the cheddar and broccoli soup, the part that makes the cheddar and broccoli. Gluten-free flour. 